Welcome back, my friends, to another episode in the tuning series. In a previous episode, we started messing around with boost, and uh, before we did that, we set up a manual boost controller, and um, that's what this looks like. Let me take off the uh, heat protection. And yeah, it looks like uh, it's made from plumbing supplies, which it is. Um, if you want to check that out, this can be made for 15 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that, from basically things you can pick up um, from your local hardware store, and it works just great. However, you have many more options if you use an electronic boost controller. So let's talk about why you'd want to use this versus this. So the manual boost controller has an internal spring and it is intercepting the signal source to your wastegate actuator here. The wastegate actuator also has an internal spring. So if this were not in the loop, then whatever boost you're putting out down here would immediately make its way to the actuator. And when you got up to the level of the spring that's installed in here, the wastegate is gonna open via this rod. Now, that may not be what you want. The spring in here is usually set to around seven to 10 PSI on a stock uh, spring on many cars. And so that may be lower than you'd like to go. So the manual boost controller intercepts that and it has its own spring, which you can dial down and increase the pressure on using this screw. And it causes it to not open until a certain boost pressure is reached. Now, in the previous video, we showed you how to do this safely to tune this before you even got it on the road. I do recommend doing that. But this type of device is very handy when you're basically experiencing simple problems like boost sag and you want to increase your boost a little bit over what's in the stock wastegate actuator. Now here's the downside. When the boost overcomes this manual spring, then the boost uh, pressure is gonna be released and in coming into here. So you really can't change this on the fly. You have to crank this up or down and, and this is a little bit dubious because um, it's not super accurate. So you really have to kind of dial it in over a course of uh, you know a few different pulls and make sure that you're in the right range. This is not something that you should really be tweaking on the fly. I've seen people who plumb this all the way into the engine compartment so that they can turn this screw or dial if you have one uh, inside the car. I don't recommend that. That could lead to massive problems. You might accidentally crank it too far and you would have no signal to the wastegate. It never opens. You generate way too much boost and bad things can happen. The electronic boost controller, on the other hand, allows you to control things on the fly and in a lot of different ways. It opens up all kinds of realms of possibility for boost by gear, boost by you know, your throttle position, uh, and basically anything you want to set up uh, you can set it up to uh, make it work and provide either zero boost signal to your wastegate actuator or 100% where it's uh, it's just running on boost gate pressure. Now the important thing is is to set this up so that if this fails in some way it will fail in such a way that it's supplying boost pressure to the wastegate actuator so you're running on your regular wastegate spring that's the safest condition. We'll show you just what I mean by that. Here's a better view of our boost controller. So this is a three port electronic boost controller. You do not want to get a two port boost controller um, because what that does is it's really no better than a, a standard manual boost controller and we don't want that, we want options. So here's how this works. Now many boost controllers will use or just rebrand this particular solenoid by Mac. Uh, and it has a setup in a particular way, which I'll go through, but this is how you find it, your setup for your particular solenoid that you might be using. So what we have over here is this port is covered by a little breather filter. This is like a little brass screen 
that keeps gunk from getting in there, dust and whatnot. And what this does is it allows it this, the magic of the three port is that this can bleed off any excess boost so that you can make as much boost as you want and nothing will get to the wastegate actuator. Now you have two more ports. Uh, one is for your source boost. This is how much boost is making from the outlet of your turbo. And then on this side, in this particular solenoid, we have the output, and this one is gonna be plumbed to your wastegate actuator. Now, how do you tell that these are the right ones and not this one and this one, or you know this one and this one? Um, well, let me show you. The most important thing is to understand that when the device is not energized, when you're not supplying any energy to this or the device has failed in some way, it's gonna fail with two of the ports normally open. And so that happens to be this one and this one. And you can see from a little diagram here that port one is normally closed. And so you can see the number one. Normally closed is the one which is used for bleeding off pressure in this case, in this situation with a single port wastegate actuator. In this case, port three in the middle here is gonna be our source air. And then two, see so these two are open. If I blow, goes through no problem. Same thing on the other side. So these two are connected normally when the solenoid is not working at all. When the solenoid is working, a duty cycle is commanded by the ECU. And what that means is if 100% of the time you're getting 12 volt power, then this will close and it will send no boost out. And so we can actually test this, and this is a good way to test if your solenoid is working at all, if maybe it's been in the car or something like that, and you have been having problems with you know, overboosting, then this is a way to test that. Aha. I have here a nine volt battery, and what we can do is set this up to actuate the actual valve that's in here. And so, what I can do is you set up, these two leads have no polarity, so you can just point them to either part, plus or minus on the battery, and you'll be able to hear a click. All right, hear that? So now I'm going to be blowing into this while I apply the electricity. So hopefully you could hear that. When I applied it, it applied 100% duty cycle to this and it stopped the air from flowing outwards, closing the valve. So in the car, what's happening is that this is happening very fast on a duty cycle frequency. So on a particular, if you say 50%, then what that means is 50% of the time, uh, power is being applied, the valve is closing, and it's only letting 50% of the, of the air out of there. So that's causing the wastegate to only open a certain amount. So wiring this thing up is usually fairly simple. Um, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. We don't wanna have vacuum hose going all over the engine compartment, but at the same time, we don't want it too close to the hottest part of the engine component. It's, uh, because we do not want to inadvertently fry our thing. So around about here is a good place for it. We've got an extra bolt here. I think it was originally for the air box. Um, but that of course has been replaced by this cone filter. And also conveniently, this little plug that's uh, wrapped in electrical tape is where the map used to plug into. And that is where we are taking back our intake air temps, and we can use this um, for boost control. If you've wired it up in the same way that's on the Trubo Kitty website, this is a great way to do it. It uses factory harness. You don't have to pull any additional wires. Uh, if you have an earlier car, 90 through 93, then you do use a plug in here, but you don't use it for the power. Instead, 
you can use this little guy right here. This little blue plug is a convenient 12 volt source. Let's get this little bolt out. This is a nice one that we can use. There we go. And what we're gonna do is run a hole through a little bracket that I've created. These are the little holes where we'll mount our solenoid onto. And for easy mounting, you may want to just tap out this, put some threads into here. This is an M4. machine screw and I've got my M4 tap right here and just tap those out and then that way you can screw it in from behind your bracket rather than through this sort of long awkward um, thing with with some sort of internal cap head on the other end that's like silly so it's easier just to use a standard machine screw like this all right so that's mounted we've got this in here little bracket Nicely protected from all this heat over here. And um, we've got our lines routed so that they're out of the way of the light pop-ups. And this one goes around kind of underneath and goes down. And that's where our source is down there from the outlet of the turbo. All right. So we got this hooked up to our harness and uh, I'll flash up uh, some of the diagrams of the wiring, but this is the wiring that's correct for my car. Um, it's like the first two pins when looking at it from this direction uh, on the MAF plug, and that goes back to boost and uh, 12 volt power. And then right next to it is where the intake air temperature sensor is wired. There's the next two pins, and then the last one is empty. Um, and I've just got tape on there to hold it steady uh, to make sure nothing pops out and then I'm gonna tape this off once we test everything out. So this is our tuning laptop. It's connected, key is on, and everything is ready to go. Um, you can notice that the engine is not on and there's no wires. If you uh, haven't figured out how to set up your uh, tuning laptop or tuning device with Bluetooth instead of USB cable or serial cable, check out that video. I'll leave a link up above and in the description. But this is what we're going to need to do. So first we're going to come up here to Boost and VVT and Boost Control Settings. And we're going to turn this to on. Now if this isn't already on then uh, you will need to um, power cycle the ECU, but I went ahead and did that just so we wouldn't have to wait and We want to select our frequency range for this particular solenoid is slow and somewhere in the 30 uh, 9 Hertz range is the frequency that we want somewhere between either either one of these will work 20 39 to 26 somewhere in there. That's fine. So we'll leave it at 39 If I can click it and our output polarity, well first our boost pin, that's the one that's been assigned. If you have a different pin depending on how you've wired up your mega squirt, then th you will select that. And so the common things are, um, you can use an extra injection pin, uh, those are common, but in our case, we've got specifically the boost pin because we have an MS3X. The polarity is going to be normal. And what that means is that some um, solenoids, focus, some solenoids work by as you increase the duty cycle, the valve opens. And in this case, when we increase the duty cycle, the valve should close. And so what that means is the higher the percentage, the more boost you get. And um, that's going to translate into our duty cycle table, which we'll look at in a second. So we're just going to leave it at 0 to 100. It's probably actually not that. It's probably 20 to 80 or something, but this works fine. And for now, we're going to do open loop. And so in open loop, it's just going to go by two values 
the throttle position and your RPMs. And that's going to tell it what duty cycle to command. And that's a good way of, of handling things. The only downside to that is that it can't take into account um, certain other situations uh, related to like ambient temperature, um, you know, d just the uh, pressure, uh, you know, your elevation, so your mat pressure, your ambient air, all that kind of stuff. And that's what closed loop can do. Uh, but we'll get into that in a future video. Okay, make sure that your overboost can, uh, protection is on. And we've got it set up to 190. That's a good one. Um, that's how we had it set for our boost tuning videos we saw before. And if you haven't already, we're going to burn and we can close. Now, here's the beauty of the Mega Squirt. You can come up here to test modes, open this up, and then go down to IO test mode. That'll open up this screen. And we can say enable test mode. It's not going to do anything yet but it's going to set us up. So we're going to select our frequency that we set on the previous screen and you can leave it at 25 duty cycle. But what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and you see all these pins. These are the different outputs possibilities that we have. And we see here boost. And what we're going to do is first test this by turning it on. So here I'll get the mic up close to our solenoid while I turn this on. So I'll click on. Hopefully you heard that. Turn it off. on and off and what that's doing is energizing the valve now normal situation is not just on and off um, it's not just zero percent or a hundred percent in normal working situation it's pulsed so we can see that work as well And that's it. So we've got our basic thing set up and you can even verify that the right pressure is pushing into this with the car off. All right, I've got a slightly different setup to show you guys what's going on. Um, so this is the line that would normally go to the actuator right here. And so I've got a pressure valve on it and then this is the line that would normally come from the outlet of the compressor from down there but instead I've got it hooked up to uh, my compressor my air compressor with a regulator and the regulator set on about 12 psi so when I pull the trigger it's going to send 12 psi so if everything's set up correctly with the valve it's not turned on we should see about 12 psi in here and so we do. So now come over here and we can change this and turn it on. So let's set it for about 10 duty cycle. Turn that on. It's very quiet at 10, but it's, it's, it is on. So it's sending through pretty much everything. Now we'll crank it up to about 20. So you can hear it a little bit louder now. So you can see it's not sending out all the air at 20 duty cycle. It's only sending it partially. It's vibrating like that because it's sending pulses of air. So it's going to, what the actuator is going to see is basically like an average. And you will actually see the actuator kind of vibrate at this level. And then when you get a bit higher, it's sending a little bit of air through, but not enough to actually open the actuator pretty much at all. And at about 70, it's pretty much fully open all the time. So that shows that it's not sending any air at all. Okay, we've covered a lot. We've looked at how electronic boost control works, how it compares to manual boost control, 
and how to test your solenoid so you can hook it up in your vehicle correctly, and even how to test your and determine your min and max duty cycles before you even start the car. In the next episode, I'll show you how to set the, up this boost control tuning dashboard that you see here, and how to log your run so you can set up the perfect boost control duty table. This means all the boosts you want, when you want it, and never when you don't. How to get the best spool, and most importantly, how not to blow stuff up. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.